Welcome to today's study session. Today we're going to be going over some of the performance-based questions from CompTIA. And we're going to start with the firewall and proxy servers performance-based question. So let's get into this uh, question here. Now this one is going to give a, each of the performance-based questions is going to give you a scenario. And I definitely invite you to read that scenario very thoroughly. It's important to understand all the key clues uh, that go along with answering one of these questions. Now sometimes these questions can be almost like a logic puzzle. They give you various pieces of information and you have to puzzle out what exactly they mean in the question. So let's read this one here. One of your responsibilities as network administrator is the maintenance of protective network devices between network segments. You realize that the firewall protects the web servers and the DMZ and that the firewall has been unintentionally misconfigured. You need to try and fix the firewall rules to minimize the impact to service for the organization's customers that rely on the website for information, as well as protect the web servers from any attacks that might notice the misconfiguration. To that end, you need to perform the following. Okay, so this is a very long-winded explanation. Okay, basically it tells us we got to fix the firewall. So try not to get too hung up on, on the long-windedness of some of these uh, explanations here. Okay. We got to fix the firewall for the customers and for to help protect against attacks. It's basically what that entire sentence says. Okay, so we have to perform the following. Basically, this whole section says the firewall got misconfigured. You got to fix it. So this is what we need to do: allow web traffic and domain name resolution to 198.134.5.6. Disallow all traffic from 208.91.196.105. Uh, ensure there's implicit deny on the firewall rules and that's it so some of this immediately you should clue into what uh, what you need to pay attention to here so first off domain name resolution so what what's domain name resolution and what port number does that fall under so that's going to be port number 53 so we're going to have to allow web traffic and DNS now what's web traffic it's HTTP or HTTPS Okay, so that's either going to be port 80 or 443. So we know that already. So let's go ahead and start on that rule. Web traffic and DNS to 198.134.5.6. So let's go ahead and find that. 198.134.5.6. Here we go. That's correct. Yep, that's the same IP. So let's see if we have any rules that correspond to DNS or web traffic. Uh, this one, destination port, we have to select it. And this one, okay, here's 53, that's DNS. So we know that we already have this available. Got it. So we know that this is already in there, and the scenario asks us to allow that traffic. So we would say, pick this uh, action of permit, okay? So then we have this destination port. We could pick, since 443 is not an option, we would pick 80 for HTTP, and we'd select permit okay so now we have those first two that first bullet point is handled there very good all right now disallow all traffic from 208.91.196.105 so let's see if we have that we have that IP address here service port any and what were you doing we're disallowing all traffic so source port any destination uh, now that's going to be from that source to any destination or any port and we would say any destination because we want to block, we want to blacklist this IP address essentially. So we would say deny there. Denied. All right, anyway. Now, the last bullet point says ensure there is an implicit deny on the firewall rules. Okay, implicit deny means that we are going to uh, Deny anything by default. Deny by default. So we'd pick source any, source port any, destination any, destination port any, protocol any, and action deny. Okay? Now, have I made any mistakes here? You always want to go through and make sure that you selected all the boxes before you hit the submit button on your, on your PBQs. And I would invite you to reread the question here. Reread the bullet points just to see if there's anything you might have missed okay it's very important it's very easy to miss one of these drop downs and if you just miss one drop down you're gonna get the question wrong or you're gonna get a portion of the question wrong let's go ahead and sub click submit so great we got that entirely correct 
And, you know, again, with the PBQs, it's going to give you all the uh, information in case you want to, you know, you want to check your work or you want to learn a little bit about all the technologies here. Okay. So one other thing to note, 8080 is sometimes used as an alternative HTTP address, but that's rarely, you're not going to see that on the exam, I don't think. Okay. So very good. Very good. So let's go ahead and do another PBQ since that one was pretty quick. Uh, let's go ahead and do secure switching and routing. This is a good one. It kind of corresponds to this topic a little bit. So I think uh, we, should, we should definitely go through that one. Okay. So... Here we go. We have our scenario. We received an alert from our IDS. And multiple hosts have connected to a known bad IP address that was supposedly configured to be denied on the organization's ACL or access control list. Okay. So after researching the network traffic, you and your team, a security analyst, diagram the traffic flow to see if any data, which could include malware, made it back to the host from the malicious web server. Now it says, note for steps two and three, the IP addresses can be placed in any order. So that can be very helpful to realize. Okay, section two and three. So this one doesn't give us a lot of information up front. It just says we have an alert from our IDS and that uh, we need to configure the ACLs, the firewall rules to deny by default or to, uh, we need to uh, reconfigure those ACLs. Okay. So let's take a look at this diagram and basically we have to configure this diagram correctly. So we have an internal client A and an internal client B. Okay. And we have some information here. Connect 10.0.0.105 49152 to comptia.org slash about us and then connect 10.0.0.108 49152 to comptia.org slash events, all events. So we have two different hosts, okay? Now this performance-based question relies you, test your knowledge of uh, port-based network access control. All right, so it's important to understand how that works, but first we're gonna select our clients here. Now you have lots of different red herrings in this question. I definitely recommend you know, trying to focus on exactly what you need. Now what, what client is this? We can see that by the the private IP address here, 10.0.0.105. So we're gonna go ahead and select that, okay? Same thing with client B, 10.0.0.108, okay? And that's all you wanna select, you don't wanna add any information afterwards, okay? Now, we're gonna connect that to, what are we connecting that to? Now it's asking us to connect to comptia.org slash about us. So we need to know the IP address for comptia.org. And both of them are connecting to comptia.org. So let's take a look. Here we see what else we have. We have a network, uh, we have a network address port translation firewall inside local IP of this IP address. So it's, that kind of shows us these internal clients and a global IP address, the IP address for this this uh, firewall, 216402319. So that's our, our public IP, okay? It's the IP address that would be associated with our organization before that IP address is uh, translated into private IP addresses. So here we have an internal web server for comptia.org. So that's gonna be our IP address there, okay? Now we wanna select that here and which one would we want to select? We, want, we have two options for that IP, 80 or 443. Well, it doesn't particularly tell you, but the idea here is you're connected to comptia.org. Comptia uses uh, transport layer security. So they have secure websites, so you would default to 443. So we would select 443 for both of those, okay? Now, the firewall needs to open connections for what exactly, and then the server needs to reply to what. So the firewall here has to open connections for a certain IP, and the server has to reply to certain IPs, 
So the firewall already has this global IP, 216.40.231.9, okay? So we're gonna have an extension of that essentially. So let's take a look at our options. If we have, okay, 216.40.231.9, 60105, same thing with 216.40.231.9, Now remember in the scenario, it says for steps two and three, the IP addresses can be placed in any order. Right there that tells you if they can be placed in any order, they're going to be basically very similar. So you know they're going to be a pair. Okay, so that gives you a little clue. We know it's not our uh, address here. That's the CompTIA site. Okay, and it's not going to be a private IP address. So the only thing that's left is our public, our global IP address. So we would select those two. Now don't get confused. The server is going to reply to the same, same IP addresses that the firewall opens. So you just select the same things. And again, you could put these in any order. So we could put these in these other orders. Okay. Now the server is going to be replying to the global IP address. And the firewall is going to be opening a connection using a global IP address and this uh, modifier for the internal clients A and B. Okay. So I hope that's clear. And if we click finish, we have everything's correct there. And it gives you an explanation here. Even though network address, address translation can be used to free up IP addresses, it can also mask the private IP address on the network to the outside world. Basically, and it explains network address translation in a nutshell. So it's a translation between private IP address schemes on internal networks and public IP addresses used by internet facing devices like the firewall. Okay. The firewall is translating. Uh, that global IP address, the public IP address, to this private IP address. Okay. When the clients 10.0.0.105 and 10.0.0.108 request a web service, they're requesting the web server's IP and port number for HTTPS. Okay. That means they're going to be requesting the IP address of that web server. They're not requesting the IP address of the firewall. They're not connecting to the firewall, even though all the traffic is routing through the firewall. They're connecting to CompTIA.org. So it's important to understand that. The clients are going to connect to the website. The traffic's going to route through the firewall, but the clients are going to establish that connection to the, the website. Okay, and then regarding connections made from the firewall to the web server, the source IP address in the traffic will reflect the firewall, but the source ephemeral, the ephemeral port, the dynamic or private port, will identify to the client. Okay, and that's where we see this right here. This is the ephemeral port, okay, 60105 and 60108. It's an ephemeral port created by the firewall to designate and uh, uh, to organize the traffic coming from client A and client B. You get that, that clue there based on this drop down and that 105 or 108 there. Okay. So in this scenario, ephemeral reports 60105 and 60108 identify the clients, and that way the traffic returns from the firewall uh, to the firewall from the web server. So I hope that was helpful to understand. It's a tricky question, and you might be thrown off. A lot of students are. A lot of my students are thrown off by the fact you select the same answers in all four of these dropdowns. With the performance-based questions, don't be shy about selecting the same thing over and over again. Some questions are going to have you say like the same topic like eight different times. So that can be a little, a little off-putting for people. They don't think that it could possibly be the same answer eight times in a row. With the performance-based questions, oftentimes it is. So keep that in mind. But I hope this was helpful going through these two performance-based questions. example kind of give you an idea of how to answer these and how to approach these on the test. Definitely recommend you take a look at our test-taking methodology. Uh, video and if you're looking for training take a look at our our um our boot camp we have a live training boot camp our self-paced courses we're happy to help we'll teach you everything you need to know to pass your exam the first try guaranteed thanks for joining me today hope you have a wonderful evening take care